Is this the perfect B camera for my Sony FX3? I think it is. Let me explain why. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Alex and I am a filmmaker who makes videos every week about trying to challenge and push myself and learn new skills. Anyway, today I think I have found the perfect B cam for my Sony FX3. I've wanted a B cam for a while for a multitude of reasons, so um, let's, let's get into it. Right, so I won't keep you in suspense any longer. I went with this. The Sony FX30. It's the APS-C little brother to the FX3. They look like identical twins. You couldn't tell unless you looked here. Or some minor details on the body, like the black screw holes, which I think they should have put on the FX3 because they look much more badass. You see, currently I am rocking the Surrey Anamorphic 50mm 1.33x anamorphic lens on there. It's a pretty awesome lens and it's APS-C, just like the FX30. Right, I so- I didn't get that. Could you try again? <laughs> By the way, if you have another request, you don't need to say Siri before you ask it. Uh, you can see that Siri and Siri got confused. Anyway, why did I go with this? The reason number one is lens compatibility. I have so many Sony lenses, admittedly all full frame, but they can still be used on the FX30, no problem at all. And in fact, with things like the longer lenses, they suddenly get a lot more reach out of them and they become an, a completely different lens. So I could shoot on one camera with one focal length and then stick it the same lens on, on the FX30 and get a completely different focal length. Also, the ones that I bought here, these anamorphic lenses, I bought these originally when I had the A7 III and with that camera, you could still shoot 4K and switch between APS-C and full frame mode. So I could still use the anamorphic lenses that are APS-C lenses on there. And then I got the A7S III and you can only do that in 1080p, so it kind of sucked and I stopped using them. But now I can use these anamorphic lenses as their APS-C on my FX30. Brilliant. So reason number two is lenses again, and this time it is lens prices. APS-C lens prices are literally pennies compared to the, the big money that you pay for full frame lenses. So it'll be nice that I'll be able to get a collection of lenses for the FX30, carry on shooting with the full frame ones on the FX3 and get some for the FX30 and not have to spend an absolute ton of money. For example, I've seen the Seven Artisans Cine Primes are like a T1.05, which is really, really good. It comes to the set of three, you can do like a 25, 50, and maybe like a 75 or an 80. And all three of them cost less than the Sigma 24-70 f2.8 that I am shooting on there. That is insane. Lens prices on APS-C, lovely. So, reason number three, is that both camera profiles will match perfectly. They both shoot 422 10-bit, DCI 4K with true 24p in S-Log3, S-Cine Gamma, and you can load both of them with LUTs and see how it is on the screen. So it will be absolutely amazing in post to just have everything match, no need to fuss about. That was another reason why I didn't go for like the Panasonics, because they are great cameras, they shoot great footage, but it might be not as easy to get them to match. So this way, it's just a lot more simple. Reason number four, all the accessories for both of them match. I have a cage on the FX3 currently, but I don't have a cage on here. Uh, I wanted to buy one to see what it was like. It's the, I went with the small rig uh, cage, the full cage, but it's kind of a half cage but with the, the, the bar on the top there. But either way, I, I've gone for that one on there. I wanted to buy one to see how it was first and now I've seen it and I like it. I'm gonna probably buy another one for the FX30. But the thing is, if I didn't and I just wanted to keep them using sharing one cage almost, I could just take the cage off the FX3, put it on the FX30. The top handle that I'm using with my Sennheiser MKE 600 condenser mic at the moment, which is currently on my FX3, would just go straight on here, no problem at all. There's a lot of other accessories which all just can interchange between the two of them, so that means no need to buy two sets of it. Perfect, once again, saving money, saving time, doesn't take up so much space. 
What more could you ask for? So number five, kind of a shallow one, but whatever. Aesthetics, they both look aesthetically exactly the same. And like I said earlier, the only thing that you can tell they are not the same camera is if you look where it says FX3 or FX30, or if you saw the sensor, they both are absolutely beautiful looking cameras and I kind of like that, so that played a part. Right, so number six is the price. This guy is less than half the price of the FX3 I'm shooting on now, but basically does all the same stuff. The difference is the full frame aspect of it, meaning that, you know, it won't be as good in low light, but that kind of balances out with the fact that it is a lot cheaper to buy all the lenses for this and the price of the body, plus the fact if I already have an FX3, I can, I can use the FX3 in low light situations and I can use this one in all the others. It's definitely workable. Right, that's it for another video, guys. What did you think? Do you have an A cam that you're looking for a B cam? Because recommendation here, the FX30 is a great camera to do that. Or do you already have an A cam, B cam setup? What's yours? Hit me up in the comments down below and um, start a conversation. Until next time, guys, peace.